don't seem like Christmas if the mummers are not here. Granny would say as she'd knit in her chair. Things have gone modern, and I suppose that's the cause. Christmas is not like it was. Mark, what's the noise out by the porch door? Granny, tis mummers, there's twenty or more. Good night and good Christmas, mummers, me dears. Please, God, we will see you next year. Well, I'm going to have to spend at least 45 here. She looks a little bit like you. A little bit. <laughs> I have never been to a tree farm before in my life. Did your parents have real trees when you no. were No. No. So you... Always artificial. So what's inspiring at this year? Well, you know, something a little different, maybe. I know I want to do a real tree. Yep. But do I want to do it in the house? Well, I was also thinking it would be really nice to just set one up outside, put some really nice lights on it, and enjoy it in the snow and all through the winter. My mom used to do that. She had a lot of fake and real trees that she would put white lights on all winter. And then it's sort of like self-cleaning. That's of... right. I can't imagine you're going to find a real tree that meets your I'm already kind of impressed with these trees, obviously. Oh. This sheet has all the critical information. It's got the prices. It's got information about how long they hold their needles. All kinds of good information and recommendations. Two-sided. So were all the ones with the red and white already taken? They're taken. They just opened yesterday. Either that or they don't want to sell them. The ones that fascinate me are these huge oversized trees. That's for like industrial lobbies. Or like town ceremonies. You know, if you got a town ceremony you need to take care of, like this baby here. There's some you can see like in, in, the, in the middle distance that's like, wow. Like that one is not for sale. It's already been tagged by someone. Maybe like the state of Rhode Island. So I get a couple concerns when I'm looking for a tree, right? I can say pretty easily, this tree, awfully weird. Isn't it? Yeah, it's too, like, um, wiry. This is why we moved to fake trees. We did the normal thing, where I grew up with a real tree. Then we moved to fake trees yeah. as adults, because we were like, that was too much work. Now, see, if I was going to get a tree of this size, this is a white-green stripe, this would be a $45 tree. Give it a smell. Because the best thing about a tree is that natural pine smell. So the red and green and the white and green indicate price. Indicate I, price, yes. I was thinking those were the tags. OK, this there's more the, available the, than I thought. You may not buy this tree. It is not for sale, so NFS. The candy cane ribbons, which if we decide to pick a tree, we may apply our own or we'll have the administrator apply it. I associate buying real trees with my father getting grumpy. I have fond memories of it being like the first week of December and there's like the first like light snowfall and you're picking out a tree in the snow. That's kind of nice, but kind of also a big pain in the ass, I would think. <laughs> I love the needle style. It's very kind of spiky and formed all the way back in. They all have the needles on them all the way. Whereas if you look at like this one. These are thinner. They feel like they're gonna fall off more easily. Yes. Is there a way for the tree to complement your current gardening strategy? Well, in the you winter, the garden them. really shuts down. Yeah. That is a new popular thing for the environmentalists. Now maybe not here, but where you buy them and they have the roots all burlapped up so that after you have it for your Christmas tree, you can plant it. Yeah, and it is kind of a really compelling idea. And I thought about that and I think they do it here. This place is like like serious tree business. I'm having a fun time just enjoying trees. Grab a cider, go get a tree. There you go. This tree, not a happy tree. I expect this tree is zero dollars. I think Charlie Brown standards are at least like, it should be alive. I was thinking about this tree, but it's red and white. How are you supposed to get that home? When they bale them, they get very small. Oh yeah? You really just have to worry about the length. I gotta say, that's a junty tree. It is a junty tree, 200 USD. You know, that's a lot of tree. Nina will have to roll on through the <laughs> difficult terrain. Off-road baby. <laughs> I want something really nice that I'm feeling like I'm getting my 50, 60 bucks worth. Okay, you guys spent 200 bucks to feel like you got your 50, 60 bucks worth. Is Glow worried that I'm gonna start getting grumpy about this whole process any moment? <laughs> she has no preconceptions about what's gonna happen today. Oh, that is one nice tree. Isn't this beautiful? NFS. Not safe for work? No, not for sale. <laughs> I see a nice one over there. Where, 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 where? Kind of straight ahead, just that one behind that small one. You see? No. Straight ahead. Right there? No, this, this way, left. No. This way? He is NFS. Maybe they keep the best trees like for to make you think like, ooh, the quality of the trees. Hi, puppy. Does anybody know how long it takes to grow a tree? I suspect like this one here, 
five, six years old. So when you finally sell one for forty dollars, it's been sitting here for just doing its thing for a long time. So that may be why some are not for sale because it's just like, hey, it's not ready for sale yet. But this one right here, for example, this is a nice tree, right? It's not perfect. It's got a little bit of a thing going on here. So you just knock that thing right off. What? Cut it? Yeah. But Frankie, it's most of the height of the tree. How do you feel about these really small trees? I think these are these are not really on the table. What about like a little chody tree like this one? This isn't too chody, but <laughs> I've kind of fallen in love with one type of needle now. This type here, plasticky, like I'm buying a fake tree. Listen. This is the kind of tree I'd go in for. Oh, what's the trouble? It's NFS and FS. We're just in field A, this field B and field C and field D. Oh my God, really? And field F is not available to the public right now. I was only proposing maybe we go into the one adjacent field. One adjacent. Okay. And okay. we also have the Myers, which they hurt. <laughs> they are a nice tree. Yeah. <laughs> Go take a look in the other field. Yeah. All right. The Bassam fir tree has strong branches and a fragrant balsam aroma. The dark, shiny green needles are an inch to an inch and a half long. You know what I think they need? What? An animatronic Santa reading that <laughs> on loop. Or at least like a 13 inch CRT monitor with a loop <laughs> video on VHS playing back <laughs> information about each of the trees. The tape oh. is clearly too worn out and should be replaced. I can't tell if this is FS or NFS. NFS. I think people decorated it with their own decorations they're coming back for it. Their own decorative NFS decorations. You, you ever doing a search for a retail product and you start to get blinded by the options? This tree's cruel. It pokes you aggressively. She warned me about these trees, these pokey trees. How are you ever going to make a decision? Oh, Frankie, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm drifting away from my core tree interest. This is too big. And it's not for sale. You know what would be a better system? What? If they had huge visible tags on the ones that were for sale. A lot of these ones that I'm trespassing by completely, like this one here, for example. It's kind of looking not that healthy. And that tree is 75. It's not an awful tree, right? It's just not the kind of tree you take home to the mother. This is a real nice tree in my opinion. You know what though? Not for sale. Why haven't, why, why not sell the good trees? All right, we're heading this way. I feel like I'm lost in a field of trees. <laughs> I think they could have stuck, cut the stuff a little more. Gem shape. They don't care about my butt. It'll manage. <laughs> there are lovely trees that I would buy here. They're all not for sale. You want to give up? Am, is it too early to give up, Frankie? <laughs> <sighs> what now? I think it's time to give up. Did you at least enjoy the tree farm experience? I really did. I feel bad I'm not buying a tree. Because like it would be nice to just you know get it done. All your best trees is not for sale. What am I supposed to do? I'm willing to pay a premium price for a premium tree, but you don't got any premium trees. A pine needle in a haystack? Exactly. You just go to Lowe's, right. look at the tree, take it home. I think whether you buy one or not, coming to a tree farm during Christmas time, it's a real Christmassy experience. Yeah. It kind of is getting me in the mood, you know? Right, right, right. It wouldn't be Christmas without presents. Yes. And what we have here is a present from former co-host Emily Brinkmeyer. Yes, who we have joining us live, by the way. Yeah, she has been working on this, this giant box, yeah. for I think like a year and a half. I meant to have them ready for your fan art competition, so that's how long it's been. But instead of rushing for uh, some stupid yeah. contest against Josh James, yes, <laughs> she decided to make it for the 100th episode. That is incredible. All right, John, I'm gonna let you open the Okay, guest. okay, I'm gonna be very careful. We've got blue and yellow tape, have oh, you not very recognized? Cool. Oh, there's a letter. You gotta read the letter. Oh, it's got beautiful handwriting. You have lovely handwriting, Emily. Oh, thank you so. Dear Boxmag, cast and crew, 11-25, 2017. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I meant to have these done in time for your fan art roundup. Emily, for one, is working on a major project. Like one, yeah. one that would blow all of these out of the water. Congratulations on 100 episodes and Merry Christmas. Love, the other left-handed Emily who sends you dollarated content. Wow. Emily <laughs> Brinkmeyer. I forgot that the other Emily who takes pictures of dolls yes. and places um, is also left-handed. <laughs> so we have two. Take care, Emily. Yes, that one from Instagram with the doll. Asterisk, sorry I'm left-handed and use a real pen. <laughs> Chuck's up first. <laughs> Holy cow, it's incredible. That is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they've got little hats with the, with the, oh my with the mini print. It's got like New Balance-ish shoes. Yeah, it really is the most Zack-like doll I have ever seen. <laughs> well, well yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing He's no. missing his headphones. We'll have to get a little pair of headphones. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, beautiful work. He's even got like real white legs. Yes. <laughs> have you ever had a doll made of you? 
No. <laughs> no, I, I it must don't be. I, I, I hear there's one of me in here. I think it's going to be kind of a surreal experience. What's this? This is... That is it, that goes with your doll. Oh, it goes with my doll. Okay, okay. But that's a uh, wow! It's incredible. Fluff <laughs> 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 his hat a little bit. Please. There you go. Oh, I love the yarn hair. And it, he's got rosy cheeks. <laughs> I, I, yeah. He's struggling with his oil levels a little. Wonderful black pants. These look exactly like my my most comfy black pants. Look at the slippers. They're very similar <laughs> to the slippers I'm wearing right now. And then I love this little pot of macaroni and cheese. How did you do that? What is the... They're little glass the, beads. Did you have to sew them in or are they glued? Yes. <laughs> you sewed those in? Holy cow! Look at how many there That's are. Insane. That's insane. Oh my goodness. Emily, had you ever made dolls like this before in your in your life? I've, I've made a few dolls, uh, some of which have shown up in your content. Um, I made the uh, Rosie the Red Cow sock yeah. puppet. It's oh. wonderful. You made that. Look at yes. this thing. I would never be able to make something like that. That is great. This is Abo the sock hue monkey. Abo the sock, sock hue monkey. Raggedy Ann's, uh, zombie Raggedy Ann and Andy's. Uh, and that's about it. Nothing this detailed or that was meant to look like something that's real. I mean, the hat is a work of, uh, of, of fine craftsmanship. It's wonderful, Emily. I can't. Can't overstate it's it pretty. It's a pretty good present. You can't see him, but Zach's over here <laughs> <laughs> just chilling with his doll. Holding it like a baby? Yeah, pretty much. Now that's the Emily. Oh, there's the Emily doll. With the varsity jacket. Yep. Custom made patches that say BXM, the X is lowercase for yeah. Box Mac. And I ordered some red cow patches and I'm gonna put one of those on the sleeve. Oh, I love the yarn hair too. <laughs> oh, the shoes are so detailed. Oh yeah, I remember she was into those yellow chucks. The scale down like clothing line is so good. People are gonna want you to mass produce these and it's gonna take years off your life. No, <laughs> these are not mass producible. They're obviously like serious works of art. Aww. We've got one Frankie Frayne. <laughs> Look at the, the layering. So we got the outer the outer coat and then there's the box max shirt underneath. And this is like a fully done mini sweatshirt. It's incredible. Check out my shoes, my old man shoes. Yeah, <laughs> they're, 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 it's so well done. And just so the people at home know, you didn't like, you didn't buy little shoes off the rack at some stores. No. And stuff. You made the, the pants and everything. I mean, it's, it's incredible. They're even hanging off my ass just a little like. <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> Here's Nina. She's got a little red cow, which is so cute. You put it next to me and the size is about right. You can fit like one, two, three Ninas. <laughs> <laughs> and finally. <laughs> wow, oh. EJ, you're so tall and skinny. EJ type shirt, these oh, EJ yeah. jeans. Look at these boots. <laughs> Here's a mini alcoholic for scale. <laughs> it's a granny square blanket. <laughs> it's a real honest to goodness granny square blanket. <laughs> you made the granny square blanket? Yes. I'm gonna contract you to make me new granny square blankets then. I'll pay you a good fee. As well as an alternate bag trash costume. <laughs> <laughs> this is like dressing my kid. <laughs> <laughs> There's still a few more things, Frankie. This looks like a little bag of gifts. A Kraft ET macaroni and cheese toy, free bendable toy with Kraft. This, wow, this must be going way back. I found that at a Thrift store, flea market. And then what do we got there? A little red cow. People have sent us photos of this, but we never actually got sent it. Texas shaped pasta. 40 cents? That's what that's what pasta costs in Texas? Well, I think that is an unboxing fit for a 100th episode. I agree. What an incredible job. These are these are works of art, Emily. Thank you. We will cherish them forever. Yes. Thanks for having me. Merry Christmas. Party hardy, Marty. Look at this. Check this out. Mance over Matt. I got a little tickle in my throat. Tis the season to be sick. Today I'm gonna show you uh, something that I've created myself through trial and error that always helps me when I have a cold. Take a little uh, apple cider vinegar. This isn't John Stock, is it? Uh, it is. Use all of it. It was a mistake to buy it to begin with. Just a little bit of lemon juice. Take a hand towel. And we're gonna shove it down Frankie's <laughs> face. Oh, bother. The smell of lemon is making a rumbly in my tumbly. I don't sound that bad. Father Christmas forgot me. Santa has forgotten me. Hello, Susie. Hello, Susie. Right this over your head like this. Oh boy. 
So it creates a kind of a tent for yourself. You're gonna hold this out so that when the steam comes up, it's all gonna kind of come up in oh, there. Wow. Slowly start to smell because the uh, the apple cider vinegar might be a little too strong for you, so you kind of gauge what you can handle. Craig so is getting a spa treatment over Lean here. over, slowly breathe. And all that apple <sighs> cider vinegar and the lemon. It smells nice, actually. I, do have, I, I, I gotta be real with you, with you. Your symptoms are you just have a cough. Do you have uh, congestion? Is yeah. it sore throat? Congestion. Is it the uh, acidity of that apple cider vinegar will help to break down any kind of congestion that's good. in your lungs? Yeah. Nice. Where did you learn this, Russia? Uh, I spent a lot of time on the internet and Russia. Yeah, just breathe in and exhale. Right into the pot. Breathe in. <laughs> Expel your soul I into my mouth. a bunch of like <laughs> lemon in my mouth. Now you should already be able to feel uh, the effects on it, on your congestion, am I right? Yeah, for sure. This is pretty good. Yeah. Matt's got a good technique. Everybody could use a manservant. Uh, actually. <laughs> you don't drink this stuff. No, no. I mean, you you could. Garnal as like, it? Um, yeah, I would put salt in it. If you're gonna gargle, sugar. <laughs> it's like, do you laugh that this hard when you go to an actual doctor? <laughs> uh, they don't make me do this. I think it smells really nice, actually. It smells a little bit like the holidays. I think if you threw some nutmeg and cinnamon in there, it I could even have a nice aroma. Like a... Thank you, man. You're welcome, servant Matt. <laughs> Thank you, man. Did you get your doll? No. Basket. Didn't find ornaments you wanted at the Christmas place? Found a few, but Pier One's always my go-to. <laughs> I've already been to the website, found a bunch of ornaments I like, just gotta see if I can find them. That one is very cute, I didn't see that one. There's also a sloth in a hat, if that's more your style. Peacock ball. You like that? Yes. It's going in my, my cup. Look at this cute snowman. Hand painted from the inside. Oh my god. Inside. Gosh. They like put in a little brush in the top and paint it. Looks gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? They're up in the game. Usually they, they used to only have one variety a year. This year they've got all kinds of varieties. And I'm pretty excited about that. The glass elephant. Oh yeah, that's way you. That is way me. Isn't that cute? I'll make it the six. You're gonna buy six of these hush puppies? Well, six ornaments in general. I've already got five. This is the third in the cart. I like this cactus with the lights on it. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's a white pine cone owl. I thought it was pretty adorable. I don't know if he's $30 adorable, but pretty cute. See, here's the thing. Nothing's as cute as this child. <laughs> so screw it all. I have kind of, you know, pre-gamed this event. This one's only four bucks, for example, which is pretty cheap. The La Vienne ones, the hand-painted ones, more expensive. That first one, the peacock one, is quite expensive. It's about 30 bucks. I'm fine with it. I'm trying to use their website to pull up an image of an ornament that I want so I can show it to a salesperson so they can tell me where it is. But not having a lot of success. Do you like the orange? I found one of the ornaments I was looking for, but it doesn't look as good in person. It looks a little gaudy. I'm gonna have to find a sixth ornament to finish my collection here so I can get the 15% off. So I think it's quarter. just what I need. Is that the one? That's the one. So that's my sixth. But I also want to look for a tree skirt and a runner. Tree skirt aisle? I never find a tree skirt I really like. Well, what are you looking for? Something simple, classic, elegant. This is kind of it, but... It's still a little too much? How much is this thing? 80 bucks. I think you gotta go to Walmart for what you're looking for. Uh, I've been to Walmart. They have ones that are really lousy. You got a Joy, her middle name, Gloria Joy. The baby. You're gonna hang it in a room with the little tree? You all done with your ornament shopping now? Uh, yeah. It seems I cannot walk away from, a, from an ornament-based store without spending $70, because that's what I spent today. You wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. We're getting nuts. So we went to that, that wonderful Christmas store. As part of that, we had some candy nuts. That really got me kind of thinking about, could I make my own candy nuts at home? Because those were pretty expensive. Four bucks for a a maybe yeah, a small, weird paper cone of them. <laughs> Are we gonna make our own paper cones? Oh, that's a little too crafty for me. I've never even made any kind of cooked nut product whatsoever. I have a recipe I've based it on, but I'm customizing it to my own wants and desires, like I often do. We've got Baby Glow. Baby Glow. Mama Nina. Uncle Angry. <laughs> Uncle Angry. <laughs> Being as noisy as possible yeah. here. You went with uh, cashews? Cashews, I love cashews. These are unsalted cashews. For you try a cashew. <laughs> Nina, would you like a cashew? A vegan cashew? They're good, They're, it's a good basic cashew. We're just gonna say cashew all day. I'm gonna measure out a couple cups here. How much did that cost for the whole tub? 16.99. 
which is about four cones. Cashews aren't actually a nut, they're like a droop or something? Yeah. So we're gonna do four cups. A droop? Well, if peanuts are legumes, are anything nuts? Will that be enough for us? Nope. Come on, last year we made 120 cookies. Four cups. Should I just do the whole thing? Yeah. Yes. Six cups? Six cups! Well, should we go no, easy no, on no, the- No, 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 we're going full tilt. For every one cup, I need a half a cup of brown sugar. This is a baby. Is that a baby? She has gone nuts. I'm gonna put it right into a fry pan. How many candied nuts have you had in your life? Um, not many. It's not a common thing just because it's so expensive. So I'm supplementing with a little bit of a white sugar to fill out the fact that I'm a little short on the brown. <laughs> Someone told me recently that oh. almond milk is so much cheaper than buying almonds because you can milk the almonds multiple times. We need to add, how much? <laughs> how much should it be? Echo, what's 12 tablespoons in cups? 0.75 cups. Three quarters of a cup, thank you. Three quarters of a cup, thank, thank you. you. Three quarters of a cup. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, hey. And that's gonna start dissolving all that sugar. We're gonna add four teaspoons of salt and I've got a kosher salt. Kosher salt, oy vey, I'm Jewish. Thanks, I've added to the episode now. I can go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next year. I love cinnamon. Hmm. Ooh, ah. Great cinnamon. Cinnamon, man. Cinnamon. 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 We're just gonna do two really heaping ones. I think that'll be plenty. Then we've got some nutmeg. So what's this recipe called, Junts Nuts? <laughs> Junts Nuts. Look, you don't need to go there because people on the comments are already going there. And we're also gonna add a non-generous teaspoon of cayenne pepper. We're all nuts about John Junts Nuts. <laughs> you excited for candy nuts, Nina? Not really? Now, Nina, you, you went up to the Christmas store after you guys went back, right? I did. I opted for the candied pecans. And how did you feel about them? They were delicious. So, so then why is your interest in my nuts so low? Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's delicious. It doesn't look like sewage at all. I mean, it could alternatively look like dessert. You guys don't need to be making poop jokes, people going poo-poo on each other. We have to stir continuously, just like you're making lollipops. You ever made lollipops? Yeah, lots of times. <laughs> Once we add the nuts in, you really have to stir continuously. If you remember you saw the nut machine, I think we have some B-roll footage of the machine stirring the nuts. Having had both the pecans and, or pecans, I know people get real upset, versus the cashews. Once they're candied, they just taste the same. This is pretty much ready. All right, I'm gonna start adding the nuts. Whoa. You have 25 minutes to make the quack on bush. <laughs> that looks like a hobo making beans on the side of the road. You poured that on some popcorn. That'd be good. <laughs> well. It was the murder. No comment. <laughs> you want to get the, that liquid into the nuts and softening them up, right? Because part of the appeal is a warm nut. <laughs> Careful what you say, don't. Warm nuts? You gotta make sure they're not busted. You don't want any busted nuts. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, as I've stirred them, some of the nuts have busted. <laughs> you can expect a small collection of busted nuts at the bottom. Gooey busted nuts. John's gooey busted nuts. Something smells really good. Is it the nuts? <laughs> Could it be the nuts? You know, I, I have to say, like, any family party I've ever been to, any holiday party, nobody makes candy nuts. I think it was a thing in the past, partially because nuts are so expensive now. It is so very Christmassy, though. It's uniquely Christmassy, because, I mean, chestnuts, roasted chestnuts, they're actually not very good. I don't know if you've ever had a roasted chestnut. No. It's really nauseating looking. I don't know what you guys are like. <laughs> you find this gross? I yes, I do, actually. It's quite gross <laughs> looking. So I'm pulling it off the heat, and I have to let it set a little bit in the pan. This is a silicon mat. It's called a silpat. Parchment paper has uh, a silicon coating on it, and the idea is they won't stick to it. So these nuts will obviously be very sticky. I love your look when you're thinking about like, are these nuts good? It's the same look of like, did, did, uh, did, did the wife do it? She couldn't have murdered him. She wasn't in the town. But what if there was a decoy? <laughs> like it's, it's that look right before a soap opera goes to commercial. Yeah. Did I leave the stove on? I did leave the stove on. <laughs> no, I turned the stove off. <laughs> We'll know they're ready when it kind of stops moving through the nuts. When the fluid stops moving through the nuts, it's ready. Hat nuts. Yes. Is that a grunt of approval? So the dog was the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can see as we turn them over, really the, they're darker looking because more of the candied solution is staying on them. We are ready to move these to the silpat. Gather around John's nuts. And I'm putting any of the leftover solution on top so it can kind of filter through the nuts. We're trying to get these as spread out as possible because whatever's not spread out, we'll have to break up manually. Once they harden, they'll crystallize. Would you want them to be sugar, more sugary? We could dust them uh, with a little bit extra sugar. What do you think? Yeah. So we're just gonna go over the whole thing with some sugar. So we've let these cool down. Uh, we're gonna break them up. 
And then I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar on the outside to get in that little crispy crunch. Are these still hot at all? Are no. they still warm? They're they're warm-ish. So I should be breaking them up as they go in? Yep, breaking them up as they go in. We're gonna toss the nuts and we'll really get that sugar on top of those nuts. What a delicious looking mess, but what a mess. You can see how nicely those sticking, sticking to those nuts. Now Matt has been kind enough to make us some cones. So that's the tradition, There's, these are traditionally served in? in? In cones, so your cones are much larger than a typical cone. But they am, we're much larger than typical people. Fill up that cone good. Make sure that cone knows. What's your final review? I like these brown nuts in my mouth. I mean, they're very good. Yeah. My only critique is that the cayenne pepper makes it a little too spicy for me. Frankie is not a fan of the spice. I probably would have done with a little less cinnamon, a little less nutmeg, and a little less pepper. And maybe done half and half on the pepper. Was this really that hard to do? Uh, it was a bit of a pain, to be honest. So don't do it at home. Sorry. Imagine Martha Stewart being like, this is a pain in the ass. Don't do that. Yeah, just buy them. Offload the pain in the ass to someone else. Right. This Christmas. That's what you should do every Christmas, people. Frankie, today we go back to where it all began. Unbox Mac. Ninth episode of Box Mac. 99 episodes, but this was the first one. With original craft versus market pantry. Today, we are going to be reviewing some macaroni and cheese on our new program, Boxed Mac. At the time, I shopped a lot at Target, and I hadn't really thought much about the wide array of macaroni and cheese available. So I remember a few things from that episode. Yeah. Not having a clue how much to salt it. That's right. We're gonna use 50 grams of salt. It seems like a lot of salt, let me tell you. But Almost all that salt's gonna go down the drain. Very little of it actually gonna make it into the pasta. Using, prop, I think maybe margarine? Yeah, I am gonna use Land O'Lakes grade A butter rather than margarine. Market Pantry came out all dry and un unhappy. Yeah, it's very dry. It doesn't look right. It actually makes me call into question if I did something wrong in the prep. I don't know what I could have done. A bunch of episodes later, coming upon 100 coming episodes. Coming upon 100. We ought to know how to prepare these Macs better. Yes. And this is about character arc. So we're gonna give these Max the entire treatment. The Kerrygold butter. We're giving them Kerrygold. The roux made in advance. That's right. Enhanced prep using the Rapid Mac, yep. which we agreed was better than the stove. Yes, well, we're gonna do Rapid Mac? I didn't even know. Is, didn't you say that's better than the stove? Oh, I wasn't even gonna do that. I was just gonna do them on the stove. I want you to give these Max the best possible treatment. I think the stove is gonna come out better well, I don't know. Now you got me thinking. This is how I use the Rapid Mac. It's now. been better. It's been, it's much better. It makes the best, what I think is the best macaroni. Because we could have done sour cream. Do you remember we really liked sour cream? Mm -hmm. We did, but I'm trying to keep it to the core. Sour cream. Sour cream. It's definitely creamier than the Kerrygold. I think it's awesome. Good, very good. Mm. But we're gonna make the roux. We're gonna make sure we cook the noodles perfectly. We're not gonna let them go over like we did in the past. Not gonna have a big ball of noodles. This is our, our PhD of Mac cooking. Doctoral thesis. Yes. Now we're doing two boxes of each because you know we're, this is the Christmas special after all. We had a lot of people to feed even though it's just lunchtime. We'll see everybody for dinner in the 100th. That's right. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve when anything can spend happen. It, yeah, spend it with your family. Spend, wouldn't that be a nice way to spend, um, spend your, your Christmas Eve watching Box Mac with your family? I don't know. I'm sure people this, do it. This is the correctly measured cup of water, finely calibrated amount of salt. We're gonna start prepping the butter. Brand new butter B-roll. Another comment, you weren't wearing the signature chef's costume on the first episode. I was. EJ's uh, wife was present that day. She was, that's like she, right. She came, she came over. Out. They bought a bottle of wine. We had to drink wine out of tumblers. When we did that episode, it was two and a half years ago. Oh my god. It was goodness. February 2015. How has your life changed, Frankie? Well, I had a baby. That's right. I bought a new car like last, like two days ago. <laughs> that was your major life event? Yes. The box art is different. It's completely rebranded. It was rebranded late last year. You know, when you get a terminal degree, yeah. they award it to you based on adding to the body of work in a given field. I think so. I think we've we've done that with mac and cheese. I think so. Through our, our Box Mac Labs, continual pursuit of the best macaroni and cheese, I think we have made a substantial contribution. Do you wanna check one of your noodles, Frank, and see how they're coming along? You can tell based on the way they plop. You didn't have noodle tools back then? No, no. Stirring strainer spoon for sampling pasta. We were living in the dark ages, comparatively. We had never even heard of H-E-B. Nope. I've never seen a purple hib. We Should can't. this be a hib show? H-E-B, not Heb. Cracker Barrel was just a glimmer in someone's eye. Cracker Barrel macaroni and cheese. It's really, really yeah, good. Yeah, it's good.
It, it, it's, it tastes like real cheese. A cheese brand that maybe you'd make mac and cheese out of, not, never something that you'd buy as a pre-made brand. We didn't know whether or not Australia or the UK even had Macs. Yeah, I had no idea. Never mind more interesting places like the Iceland Mac that we got. Remember that one? It's like a box Mac trip down memory lane. Remember box Mac. <laughs> <laughs> What stands our worst Mac? Is it still the Evo? I think so. <clears throat> oh, it's gross! <laughs> it's awful! <laughs> Let's have a quiet moment. <laughs> Ooh, I remember in the first episode, you were like all about weighing stuff out. Food scales are an essential tool. Not, not a soul uses a scale to cook one dollar box macaroni and cheese. Not, I do. Not a soul. I had a little bit different vision about what we'd do. I thought we would get even fancier and have like B-roll shots of the boxes and put up the calorie counts and you know the rest of the formulations and all that. Too hard. Way too much work. This is done. Done. And what kind of milk did you use? Um, at that time, I think we used 1%. Today we're using whole. Wouldn't it be amazing if these were way better than the first time we had them? I think they should be. It's Kerrygold butter there, premium. Only the best for this experience. It's hard to imagine that I've edited that many episodes. I know, and so much other content to boot. I can't even imagine how many hours it all is. You don't remember any of the jokes we made that first episode, do you? Well, one of them was no noodles. No noodles. That was in the first no episode. No noodles, yeah. No noodles. No noodles. Massage the cheese packets. In the meantime, I'm gonna massage the cheese packet. And massage the cheese packet. And remember, we learned from our blind taste test that the roux is what matters. That's right. I think this is 100% the roux. Yeah, I think so too. The cheese sauce tastes thicker. Yeah. It's much better. Yeah, it is. That's looking like a great sauce, isn't it? Doesn't that look wonderful? Right. Guide them in. I'm trying not to make it go. There we go. There we go. Definitely looks way less uh, dry than the first time we did it. I remember the fans were really big on like, do the roux first. And we got real shit with them about it. <laughs> we did. And, it, and then we did the research and found that they were right. It looks like good mac and cheese. This is what a hundred inch rice will get you. This is a very special episode. We're gonna serve on my premium square plates. How about that? So serve us up some premium square mac. John, I think this was a fun idea. I think this was great. This retake. I mean, the mac looks actually pretty good. It looks very nice and creamy. Cheesy. I think market pantry first. It's great. It's good. It doesn't at all have that dryness, that no. flakiness, that. None of that at all. Got a little bit of sharpness in it. Quite a bit of sharpness. It's really good mac and cheese. Yeah. We didn't like it at all. We gave it like a five last time. I give this like an eight. Mm -hmm. Out of 10, what do you give both of these macs? Four and five. Four and five, yeah. wow. Well, you so, gotta give it, there are some good mac and cheeses out there. You gotta give it a place to go. Which goes to show you the prep matters. All right, this is a little lighter in color, a little bit thinner. It tastes like buttery Kraft Original. It's better, way better, but yeah. it tastes like butter. Kraft Original still kind of lags behind for me. It's good. Either Margaret Pantry's reformulation is that good or our reprep is that good. I'm definitely gonna say that the Kraft is, is a better macaroni and cheese here. Yeah, no, no doubt. It's not to say there is no such thing as bad mac and cheese. No. You can put Kerry Gold in terrible mac yes, and cheese. Yes, and it wouldn't help. With adding that little bit of extra effort and some fairly expensive butter to your cheap macaroni and cheese, mm -hmm. you can really get a nice time. And get your salt ratios right. Yes. We've got to put our 50 grams of salt into one. One of the simplest things to cook in the world, and yet a little so hard. A little complex. Like anything, when you, once you look at the details of it, you see there's so much more to it. So happy 99 episodes. Happy 99. We will see you in the very special 100th. Very, very special. Where I'm gonna try me. This is gonna be fun. To make the home style man. I'm not gonna help him. He's got three lifelines. We'll see you that time on Box Mac. We'll have to see what happens on the next episode of Box Mac. You know what's coming. You know what's next week. That's right, the 100th episode of Box Mac. And we've got even more surprises in store. EJ's gonna make you a nice smoked meat. We're gonna announce some contest winners. I'm gonna take a crack at the home style recipe and it's all gonna end with a nice holiday meal at the end. It all airs Christmas Eve, the most magical night of the year. So throw a log on the fire and get ready. Box Mac 100.